Okay, so we're going to walk through the implementation of Sinclair and Lightning. So there are a lot of imports. And first, I guess I want to start with, um, you know, showing you how to install iTorch Lightning, right? So you can just do this. I already have it installed, so I won't actually run the command, but you click this um, and then it will install Lightning. Uh, the other library that you need here is Bolts. So in Bolts, we have a lot of the code that you're about to see right now. Um, it's already there and live, and we're just going to walk you through how to um, how to implement it from scratch, right? Um, and some of this I'll copy paste because it's a lot of code for like transformations and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So to get started, um, bringing in most of the kind of imports here that we're going to need. So I'm just going to paste these up here so that we have them. Great. And now we're going to implement the transforms, right? So first is the kind of simpler transforms. So we want two types of transforms. We want a, sorry, let's do this. We want one for the training data set and then one for the, for the validation data set. So I'm just going to copy paste all of this because and kind of walk you through that, right? So let's just say first is the parameters that we want. So if the image, we want to make this generic so that it can work for any size image. So we're going to have a default parameter here. And then we're going to have this uh, flag to say whether we want to use a Gaussian blur or not. It's optional in Sinclair. So if you're using image nets, they do use a Gaussian blur. Any other data set, you don't. And then the jitter strength is one. So uh, we're going to jitter hard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so what else do we have on here? OK, so we're just going to track the variables internally. And then we're going to set up our jitter transform. So this is the first transform, right? So this is our color jitter. So let's call this jitter transform. And this is just a standard um, transform from PyTorch. Yeah. From Torch Vision. Torch Vision, yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to create the pipeline of transforms, right? So here are the other transforms that are specified in Sinclair. So first is the random resize crop, which is, as we discussed, one of the key ideas in the paper. Um, and then we're going to randomly horizontally flip, uh, random apply this jitter, right? So with some probability, 80%, we're going to apply the jitter or not. And then with 20% probability, we're going to grayscale things. So as you can see, I can take this and apply it to the same image multiple times, and I'll get a different result every single time. Yeah. Now, if I do want to use the Gaussian blur, then I'm going to also add that to my transforms, right? So I'm going to append this here. And we'll define the Gaussian blur in a second. But there's going to be a kernel size, which I'm going to make it a function of the height of the input. And then uh, we're going to append. This is a kind of a mandatory transform that you have to use if you want to work with uh, tensors and PyTorch. So this will just map all of this to tensors. All, all the transforms here are being applied to pill images, right? So they're not tensors yet. Yeah. And then if we do want to normalize, which it's usually a good idea, then uh, we will do, do that normalization uh, transform, right? Yeah. And where is the point? Okay, so this is a standard normalization from Bolt. Um, so you can see in the imports you have CFART and normalization and STL and right. normalization. And so each one of these data sets, so in Bolts we have the data modules, right? So data modules is just a collection of a train, data loader, validation data loader, and test data loader, and then the specific transforms for each. Um, so if you import the C410 or STL or ImageNet data module, then each one specifies the normalization uh, parameters for it. So you don't have to remember what they were. So if we want to do normalize, we can enable this flag. Yeah. And then we're going to compose the final transforms here. Right. So this is going to be our train transform. Now, when this gets called, when in, inside the training loop, this is going to get called when the data is being loaded. When it's going to get called, you have an image here. So here's the sample, right? So this is a pill image. Uh, you're going to say, I'm going to use the train transforms here. And then I'm going to take the input and I'm going to apply it twice, right? So this is how you get those two versions of that same image. Um, that's very critical to, like, this is the main idea, one of the main ideas of Sinclair. 
And it's also the main idea behind a lot of their papers. So you take this image, you apply the set of transforms, you get one version of that image, you apply it again, you get a second version. So this is for your train transform. Okay, um, when you get a eval batch, you want to do the same, except you don't want to use all the same transforms, right? So again, we'll track these parameters internally. And then we want to uh, only resize and then, and then convert it to a tensor. So we're not doing any fancy jitter or any normalization or anything like that. Well, in this case, we do normalize, but we're not doing any of this flipping or resizing or jittering for the evaluation. So that's the, the val loop and then the test loop as well. Um, okay, so we'll call this a test transform. And then again, when we call, when, when this transform gets called, then we're going to, we're going to take the same image, then we're going to run it through the set of transforms once, we're going to get one sample, and then we're going to run it again and get a second sample. So that defines our eval transform. And now we talked about Ga Gaussian blur, so I'm going to just paste that on here. So I'm going to add it up here because we need it for the other code. Okay. So this is just going to apply a Gaussian kernel um, to the image and make it a little bit blurry, basically. Yeah. Uh, since we are doing this on PIL, that's why we use CV2. If you wanted to do this on the tensor itself, you could have used Cornea. Uh, 